Hello everyone, this is Shadi Stefan, Segment Market Manager for the Chemicals Business at Perkin Elmer. Thank you for joining our mining workshop series. We have an exciting program spanning all aspects of sample preparation and analysis techniques within the mining industry. Perkin Elmer Global Mining Team prepared an exciting series of 11 talks. Over the course of this series, our team of experts will engage you with various talks covering all aspects of sample preparation and analysis in the mining industry. I will start with an overarching talk about Perkin Elmer broad per mining portfolio and our team of experts will engage you with more technical talks starting from sample preparation for geochemistry and mining to the use of atomic absorption spectrometry with a talk highlighting our current offerings product features, and a survey of the applications highlighting the Pinnacle series performance analyzing precious metals. The fourth and the fifth stocks of the series highlight our optical emission offering, the obvious series of ICP OES, with the fourth stock featuring the Avio 200 analyzing copper, gold, ore, highlighting its great economical fit for laboratories, analyzing limited number of samples. The fifth stock, analysis of impurities in metals with the Avio 500 ICP OES. This stock is designed to deepen your knowledge dealing with interferences. Learn about universal data acquisition, UDA, and multi-component spectral fitting, MSF, and achieve exceptional precision analyzing impurities in metal concentrate samples. Next in the series is a talk on the multiple strategies that our user can benefit from analyzing acid digest or fusion samples on the next ion series of ICPMS. It is a talk that walks you into what feature you need to use to resolve a specific challenge. When should you use extended dynamic range, EDR? When should you use all matrix solution, AMS? Or how to improve detection limits or background equivalent concentration using the right analysis mode, kinetic en energy discrimination, KED, versus dynamic reaction cell, DRC. The series continue with a specific talk about rare earth element analysis by ICPMS, a talk that highlight interference management, analyzing rare earth elements and the next ion series, robustness and stability, analyzing fusion samples. Next is a thermal and elemental talk featuring the use of our thermal offering in various mining sectors, coal, fly ash and coke. Talk number nine is a talk dedicated to gemstone analysis. A very interesting talk discussing our solutions for gem, gem, gemstone quality and purities via our wide portfolio of molecular spectroscopy, featuring our newly released Spectrum 3 infrared and the Lambda series of UV vis spectrometer. With the recent global demands on lithium minerals and lithium batteries, it was imperative to include a comprehensive talk to element analysis in cathodes materials of lithium ion batteries. Least but not last, we have a laser ablation, a collaborative talk featuring the newly released carousel auto sample from Elemental Scientific, coupled to the next I in 2000 for direct analysis of XRF disks. That said, I really hope you constantly join us tuning in to various talks. Now back to our talk for today, Perkin Elmer, a trusted partner in mining, all you need to know about testing equipment. As I mentioned earlier, this is an overarching talk to get us started with the series. And we thought we should start with a bit of history on mining, its evolution, the currently employed mining techniques and the mining process and how analytical instrumentations are utilized in its various steps. Since civilization began, P 
people have used mining techniques to access minerals in the Earth's surface. Flint bubbles were first extracted from deposits in France and Britain, as far back as the New Stone Age, while ancient Egyptians mined copper as far back as the 30th century BC. In the beginning, miners used primitive tools for digging. Mining shafts were either dug out by hand or using stone tools. Mining technology leaped forward in the late Middle Ages when miners start, started using explosives to break up large rocks. During the Industrial Revolution in the late 1800s, improvements in both explosive technology and mechanical drills significantly increased the capability and efficacy of mining. Where are the mines and minerals spread across the globe? This is a great visual showing the distribution of metals and minerals across various regions. As you can see, some regions or countries are richer in minerals than others. As an example, you can see Canada, Brazil, South Africa and Australia, among others, are rich in minerals, where, whereas other countries like Western Europe have very few. When it comes to mining techniques, four common techniques are commonly used. Underground mines are more expensive and are often used to reach deeper deposits. Surface mines are typically used for more shallow deposits. Placer mining is used to sift out metals from sediments in river channels, beach sands, or other environments. In situ mining, used in mining metal salts, involves the solving of involves the solving the mineral resources in place, then processing it at the surface without moving rock from the ground. Mining process. All mining operations start with exploration. This is the process of finding high quality ore, which is rich in minerals. Once the step is complete, a decision on what to mine at the site can be made depending on the findings. These include the type or the types of minerals found and their location in the earth's crust. They will also determine what mining technique and processes are used as these can differ with location and ore type. In general, drilling and blasting are used to get the ore out of the ground. This process is usually followed by crushing and milling to get the mineral out of the ore, and then a separation step to separate the mineral from the waste rock. Separated minerals undergo further refining treatments to clean the minerals and metals. Once purified, metals and minerals are distributed for various applications. As well as the main mining processes that were discussed in the previous slide, mining operations are required to consider their environmental impact and also utilize heavy equipment that requires condition monitoring to keep running. Perkin Elmer, with its broad portfolio of testing equipment, offer complete solution to environmental testing as well as heavy equipment condition monitoring. If you need to know more about our solution in environmental or condition monitoring, feel free to connect with us with your inquir inquiries. Let's return to mining and discuss equipment needed for analysis. Perkelemmer has a complete portfolio of atomic spectroscopy testing equipment and sample preparation solutions. On the left side of the slide, we can see our sample preparation block, Titan microwave preparation system. In the middle, we have our atomic absorption spectrometry product lines, the Pinnacle 500 and the Pinnacle 900. Then we have our atomic emission spectrometry the AVU 200 and the AVU 500. We as well have our ICPMS product line on the right hand side of the slide, the next ion 1000 or 2000, and the newly released next ion 5000. 
As you know, mining operations generate a lot of samples, thus a need for robust, reliable automation solutions that seamlessly integrate with our analytical platforms. Perkin Elmer offers a wide range of automation platforms. The S20 auto sampler and accessories for FIMS flow injection mercury system and the FIAS flow injection atomic spectroscopy for hydride analysis. The SC auto sampler series with integrated flow injection offering for high throughput analysis. We also offer a wide variety of OEM auto automation solutions and various advanced options for inline dilution and automated sample handling and preparation. Aside from the atomic spectroscopy, Perkin Elmer have a good thermal testing portfolio that is used in various stages of the mining process that we discussed earlier, especially for coal, fly ash, and coke mining. We also provide testing solution for gemstone and gemstone quality and purities via our, our wide portfolio of molecular spectroscopy, featuring the spectrum tree, spotlight and lambda series. These techniques empower laboratories with the right analysis to identification of gem type, diamond type classification, counterfeiting testing, treatment, quality and geographical origin. Let's go through the steps of mining operations, which start with exploration. Exploration is a search for minerals in the Earth's crust that appear in high enough concentrations and amounts to be extracted and processed for profit. We have two types of exploration, generative exploration and targeted exploration. Generative exploration require a wide range of testing that is because we are trying to fully characterize the landscape. Targeted exploration usually follows generative exploration and is commonly associated with starting the, the mining operation. As one can see from the list of, of analysis and sample preparation on the right side of the slide, we have a whole battery of testing that are commonly associated with generative exploration from simply measuring the pH and the conductivity of the soil, to halogen analysis, to metal analysis, to other type of specific analysis that really give us the full characterization of the landscape. After the generative exploration, we're going to move into the drilling and blasting or as well the targeted exploration. Drilling is certainly one of the more common techniques used in, in mining today. When drilling, the mining operation relies on data to guide the areas and depths. It's referred to as targeted exploration or drilling. Depending on the operation and the ore, samples are usually analyzed for a wide range of parameters. However, the testing is def definitely less extensive than exploration. Again, as you can see, the sample analysis uh, number or techniques is actually less from what we just saw into the generative exploration. Now into the targeted exploration, we are really start to focus our testing into what really help us or help the mining operation guide that, um, that drilling process. The number of tests are slightly less from halogen analysis to metal analysis, maybe a little more of selected elements like mercury, selenium, something really that guide us or help uh, this process. After drilling and blasting, we have crushing and milling, getting minerals out of the ore. Crushing is a process of reducing the size of ore so that it can be further processed. Milling is the process of the agglomeration of particles and dispersing them in a liquid medium. These processes are frequently monitored for QA, QC, quality assurance and quality control by analyzing samples constantly for a specific set of tests. Testing could vary on the minerals metal being processed, of course, 
And as we can see under the sample analysis or the sample analysis requirements, we are now more limited to really techniques that enable us to measure metals like the, the atomic absorption, atomic emission with the ICP OES or the ICPMS. Um, X-ray fluorescent is uh, comes on board uh, now in this process where we can uh, start uh, providing a, a more QA, QC type of analysis for uh, this process. After crushing and milling, really it's a separation step, separating the mineral from the rock or from the waste rock. There are many types of separation techniques used in mining. Techniques are specific to the mineral metals being mined. Gravity separation, such as centrifugational force, magnetic force, or buoyant forces, are some of the oldest techniques used in the mineral processing. But these, these seen a decline in use since the introduction of methods like flotation, classification, and leaching. To name only a few more widely used techniques include size separation, and automated ore sorting. These processes are frequently monitored for QAQC by having samples constantly analyzed using a specific set of tests. Speaking about tests, the tests employed in the steps are less than the step before. And as we can see, we can start seeing online UV vis and online near infrared uh, as two tests being added to the process or more specifically to the online process. After separation, we are now at the refining stage, cleaning the mineral or metal to the grade that the supplier wants to is manufacturing. There are three common refining methodology. Pyrometallurgy use thermal treatment of minerals and metallurgical ores. Hydrometallurgy use of aqueous chemistry for the recovery of metals from ores or concentrates. Electrometallurgy the use of electricity or electrical energy to produce metals from electrolysis. At this stage, samples are analyzed for impurities and QAQC testing using a specific set of analysis. At this stage, in the, the instruments used are very minimal. Uh, we are really relying into measuring impurities into metal concentrate. Uh, so the most commonly used instrument in, at this stage is either an ICP OES or an ICP MS, depending on the quality uh, of, the, uh, of the metal or the mineral that are being uh, uh, refined. The next step after refining is really the distribution, distributing the minerals and the metal. Since we're talking about history uh, and the history of mining, originally distribution of metals and minerals started by using horses and carriages. However, transport methods have evolved and now we commonly use trucks, trains, and boats. Mining is really the beginning of a product life cycle. After a mineral metal is mined and distributed products are manufactured from these materials and the product life cycle is created and managed so that a precious materials can be recycled. Perkin Elmer, which is extensive product offering, can assist during all stages of a product life cycle. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed our talk for today, and I invite you to come back in the near future to check on other talks that are being added to the series. Thank you.